Last episode, I told you they're building something. Greenland for the minerals, Venezuela for the backup stash, Korea's memory chip industry on an annual leash, and small modular reactors, SMRs, pocket-sized nuclear plants, fast-tracked to go critical by July 4th. I called it the Seed Grid, a private, nuclear-powered infrastructure for AI that we're not invited to. Some of you got it. Some of you called it a pipe dream. Fair enough. Then a viewer named JP Farmer 4206 told me to look at something FERC dropped on December 18th. So I did. And Elon Musk announced he's building a $20 billion data center in Mississippi called, <laughs> and I cannot stress enough that I'm not making this up, Macro Harder with two R's. Because nothing says serious infrastructure project like naming your data center like a porn parody of a diehard sequel. Hit that like button if you believe like I do that whoever named Macro Harder should be promoted immediately. Subscribe if you've ever felt cheated because you absentmindedly flush the toilet without looking first. And share this with someone who understands that Robin Masters and Higgins are absolutely not the same person. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, last time. This is Rod Miller AI. This is your brain after watching Rod Miller AI. Any questions? December 18th, 2025, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, issues an order about data centers and power. Sounds boring. To read it, it probably was. But it's not. It's chiffon. It's the most important thing nobody read over Christmas. It wasn't a very popular bedtime story for, for kids on Christmas Eve. Here's what FERC told PJM, and then that's the grid operator for 13 states and 67 million people, in case you're not one of those. FERC told PJM to create three new categories of electrical service. Category one, firm contract demand transmission service. That's bureaucratic speak for your power doesn't get interrupted ever. Grid crashes, everyone else goes dark, you stay on. That's for data centers with their own co-located generation. Category two, non-firm contract demand transmission service. Lower priority, power will be interrupted when things get intense, still important, just not macro harder important, because what is? Category three, interim non-firm transmission service. Temporary access until they build the infrastructure to serve you and I properly. Translation, eh, we'll get to you eventually, maybe if there's any power left. Now, FERC didn't explicitly say AI gets tier one, hospitals get tier two, your house gets whatever's left. That would be, you know, too honest. What they said is, if you're a data center with your own power generation, you can buy yourself out of the public grid entirely. Everyone else? Well, we're on the grid that gets curtailed when demand exceeds su supply. Curtailed? I think that's a haircut that I get, isn't it? A men's, men's curtailed? Or maybe that was from the 60s you went and got a curtailed? I don't know. Actually, what it means is rolling blackouts. The FERC chairman called this a monumental step towards fortifying America's national and economic security in the AI revolution. Yes, prepared. Harumph, harumph, harumph. How do you get a harumph out of that guy? She's not wrong. It is monumental. The question is, monumental for whom? Because while FERC was writing this, Elon was in Mississippi getting the largest economic development deal in state history. Governor Tate Reeves called it record-shattering. Elon called it insane execution speed. I call it the seed grid getting off to an electrifying start. Let's talk about what Elon just bought in Mississippi, shall we? $20 billion, a retrofitted building in South Avon, a power plant site next door. And when it's done, XAI will have nearly two gigawatts of computing power. Two gigawatts. That's enough electricity to power about 1.5 million homes. For one company's AI training. And here's the kicker. 
Mississippi gave them a data center incentive, sales and use tax exemptions on all computing equipment. The city and county are giving them fee-in-lieu agreements, which is going to add up to billions of dollars, by the way. So the largest economic development project in Mississippi history is getting tax breaks while our power bills goes up. Nice, huh? Governor Reeves Reeves said there's no better time to invest in Mississippi. He's right. There's no better time for Elon, that is. Meanwhile, Microsoft just did something fascinating. They announced a community-first initiative where they'll pay their full power costs and reject local tax breaks. Oh, really? Why the sudden attack of conscience? Because Brad Smith, Microsoft's president, went home to Wisconsin and found out the locals don't want to talk about jobs anymore. They want to talk about why their electric bill went up 40%. The farmers won, temporarily. Smith literally said, uh, this sector worked one way in the past, but needs to work in some different way going forward. Apparently the peasants aren't happy. Translation, in case you didn't get that, enough people in flyover states started showing up to town halls with pitchforks. Microsoft had to act like they gave a crap about something other than training LLMs on the collective works of humanity, our backs. But here's what's beautiful. Trump, (laughs) President Trump, leaked Microsoft's announcement on Truth Social the night before. (laughs) He said his administration had been working with tech companies to secure their commitments to the American people. So Microsoft's big community-first pivot got scooped by by Truth Social and President Trump's post at 11 p.m. That's the energy we're working with here and the people we're working with here, boys and girls. (laughs) Got to hand it to the guy. Now I need to tell you about something a financial analyst named Dave Friedman just published because it's going to make you feel like you're in a frickin' Twilight Zone episode. Over the past year, the AI industry has announced more than half a trillion dollars in infrastructure commitments. We've talked about it, the circular, you know, investments. NVIDIA, OpenAI, 100 billion. Oracle, OpenAI, 300 billion. AMD, OpenAI, 100 billion. You know what all these deals have in common? The paperwork is thinner than Jeff Bezos' hair. Friedman went through every SEC filing, every earnings call, every press release, and what he found is a masterclass in corporate ambiguity. These announcements, mind you, they move markets. They juice stock prices. They get breathless coverage on CNBC. But when you actually dig into the filings, you find language like, up to and over time and subject to various conditions, henceforth and hence to, you find optionality dressed up as a commitment. One deal he has warrants tied to stock price targets that may, you know, never hit. Another has milestone payments that aren't defined. A third reference is a customer that isn't named in any SEC document. Friedman's conclusion, and here's a direct quote, The market is being asked to trust without the tools to verify. Trust, but verify. Half a trillion dollars in announcements. Headlines that move trillion-dollar valuations. And when you ask for the receipts, you get a press release and a forward-looking statements disclaimer. Remarkable. Unbelievable. We're building a two-tier electric grid based on deals that might be real, might be options, might be aspirational targets. I have better luck with my wet dreams, and I'm almost 60. But Macro Harder is definitely getting built. That's one, that one's real. You know, it's got two R's, so that's real. Now, let me connect this back to episode one, shall we? Earlier in the week where we talked about why Greenland that nobody watched. (laughs) Poor me. Remember the rare earths? Disposium, dysprosium, your sprosium. Terbium, eterbium, rhymes with disturbium. Sounds about right. The stuff China controls 90% of, in other words, the stuff we're trying to get from Greenland, those minerals aren't just for AI chips. They're for what comes after AI chips. 
IonQ, one of the leading quantum computer companies, builds their qubits out of it, 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 it terbium. That's a rare earth metal. Every qubit in their system is an ionized ytterbium atom trapped in electromagnetic field. Quantinum, quantinum, quant, quant, quantinum. Can we call these again? Can we just call them Bob's company? Another major player just unveiled Helios in November. 98 qubits. They use ytterbium for something called sympathetic cooling. And erbium, that rare earth is being developed for quantum internet and emits light at the exact wavelength fiber optic cables use. Same infrastructure we already have. Erbium dope crystals can store entangled photons, and that's the repeater network that quantum uses. Same minerals, same 90% Chinese choke point, same supply chain. Imagine that. So the seed grid isn't just about AI. It's about what comes after AI. And quantum computers need to be cold. Not cold like your freezer cold, cold like outer space cold. Outer space is 2.7 Kelvin, which is negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit. Quantum computers run at 15 millikelvin, a thousandth of a degree above absolute zero, colder than anywhere in the known universe that we've found. You know what the cooling requires? Power. Massive, uninterruptible power. So now you see why FERC created a tier for firm service. Now you see why macro hardware needs two gigawatts for XAI. Now you see why the United States is going after the countries with the rare earth materials we don't have. One more piece, because a viewer asked about Greenland and, and cooling. They're not just mining Greenland, they're wiring it. There's a $468 million subsea cable upgrade happening right now. Greenland connects Newfoundland to Nook to Iceland. This year, Greenland's state-owned telecom is opening a new data center in the capital. Why Greenland? Like the viewer said, free cooling. The Arctic air is your refrigeration system, hydroelectric and geothermal power. And the new Polar Connect cable will run across the actual North Pole connecting Europe to Asia through the Arctic. And here's a number for you. The old route from London to Tokyo through the Suez Canal takes about 230 milliseconds for data. The Arctic route, 170 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds faster. You know what 60 milliseconds is worth to a high-frequency trading firm? Hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Being one millisecond late means somebody else already bought the deal, and all you're left with are angry investors. So while we're arguing about whether AI can do our jobs, spoiler, a new study says it can only complete about 2.5% of tasks autonomously, the people building this infrastructure are shaving milliseconds off data routes and locking up minerals for quantum computers most of us won't see for a decade. We're building a two-tier power grid for technology that can barely finish its homework. But the infrastructure will be ready when the technology catches up. And that's the plan, like it or not. I want to leave you with something Michael Burry said this week. You know Michael Burry? He's the guy who predicted the 2008 housing crash. The big short guy. <laughs> he was in a roundtable with co-founder of Anthropic and some other big names, and someone asked him what he'd tell policymakers if he had five minutes. Here's what he said, and I'm paraphrasing. Take a trillion dollars, bypass all the protests and regulations, Dot the whole country with small nuclear reactors. Build a brand new state-of-the-art grid for everyone. For everyone. But that's not happening. What's happening is FERC creating tiers. What's happening is macro harder getting tax breaks in Mississippi. What's happening is Microsoft doing damage control before the because the farmers got loud. Burry wants a grid for everyone. They're building a grid for themselves. The guy who saw 2008 coming is watching trillions pour into AI infrastructure, and he's asking, who is this actually for? I think we know the answer. It's not us. Now, every source is linked below. FERC filings, the XAI press release, Dave Friedman's analysis, Michael Burry's actual quotes. The seed grid isn't conspiracy theory. It's a business model, and FERC just told us which tier we're on. Next episode, we're going deeper. The names behind the money, the Pax Silica Initiative. Yeah, that's what they're calling it now. Seven countries forming a coalition to secure the AI supply chain. 
it's not conspiracy theory when they put all this out on press releases and it's there for all of us to read. I'm Rod Miller. This is AI News for people who ain't stupid. I'll see you in the next episode. Ha, 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 ha,